Are you tired of print on demand services? Do you want to start printing your own t shirts in 2022? Let's go over the most common ways you can get started in the apparel business at home and what the startup costs are actually going to be. Now, the first way that most people get started is with heat transfer vinyl. Heat transfer vinyl, not that much involved in doing it. You can pick up uh, vinyl at a lot of hobby stores like Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joanne Fabrics. Um, you're going to pay a premium for these smaller pieces versus going to a larger supplier like uh, Perfect Press HTV or one of these places that sells it by the roll. It's gonna be much more cost effective to buy it in larger quantities. Not to say that you have to, but you will save yourself some money. You're also gonna need to pick yourself up a vinyl plotter. Vinyl plotters run anywhere from 200 to say 600 bucks. Get yourself something in the middle. I would go with a 20, 24 inch plotter just because you're gonna be able to fit a larger surface in it. You don't wanna be printing t-shirts that are small, baby size t-shirts all the time. So if you get yourself like a Cameo, you're gonna be limited to like a 12 by 24 cut area. You're really gonna want something a little bit bigger than that. Maybe not uh, as, as all the bells and whistles that the Cameo has, but a plotter is a plotter. Next thing you're gonna need some software. A lot of them do come with softwares. So like if you do buy a Cameo, you do get the Silhouette Studio with it. I personally use a different, uh, Plotter software with my plotter, it's Easy Cut Studio. Uh, I would definitely say paying for software versus getting a free version, you're gonna get a lot more benefits to paying for it. I would go that route. Next up is gonna need, you're gonna need this pretty much regardless of which way you go, and that is a heat press. Now, here's the thing. You don't have to spend $2,000 on a heat press to print t-shirts. You can get yourself a decent heat press for around 200 to $300. I would recommend, however, going with a 16 by 20 inch platen size because you're gonna wanna print designs that are bigger and you're gonna wanna print 2XL and up shirts and you're not gonna get that on a 14 by 14 inch press. Now, if you're just getting started, maybe you can get away with it. I would just fork over a couple more bucks, get the big one, it's gonna last much longer. It's gonna cover a larger variety of items. Now, a couple other little things you're gonna need. If you're doing heat transfer vinyl, you're gonna need a picker, a little tool with a a little spike on it helps you weed out the vinyl you're going to need some teflon sheets to put on there help you from burning your shirts and then you're going to need some t-shirts that's about all you really need to get started draw you up some designs uh, turn them into vectors it's not that hard a lot of the software will trace the pngs for you and then you just have to learn how to separate them within the software so you can cut multiple colors so that is the most common way i think people do get started because the cost effectiveness isn't that bad. The next way you can get started in the t-shirt business is with sublimation. I did do sublimation a while ago. It wasn't for me, but it might be for you. Sublimation is basically taking a printer that is made to print sublimation inks or a printer that's not and converting it and using sublimation inks in it. And you can get started with one of those five to $800 range. You can get up and going with sublimation. Sublimation is gonna print ink onto a transfer sheet you're then going to take that transfer sheet and cure it under your heat press, and then you're going to press it onto the garment. Now, sublimation goes on polyester. It can go on other sublimatable products like mugs and keychains and stuff like that, but mostly it's gonna be a polyester transfer, and for printing it, sublimation, it really needs to go on a white surface. That is the reason why I nick sublimation. There are other ways to do it. You can buy, subly sheets, uh, subly 201s where you print and then cut. My personal view on it is it doesn't feel good. It feels kind of plasticky and doesn't last that long. Colors kind of wash out. I ended up eating more cost trying to print on those than it was worth. So sublimation for me was kind of a no-go. I sold the printers and, uh, and gave her a bunch of the stuff, the person that bought it, so that they could be on their way with sublimation. But wasn't for me, might be for you. The next way you can go, and this is kind of new to the market, is direct-to-film printing. Direct-to-film printing is taking a printer, like a desktop printer you can get started with, that's converted, slight modifications, different ink. You're printing ink onto a transfer. You're putting an adhesive powder on the back of it. You're curing the powder, and then you're pressing it on the garment. Huge benefits to this is you can press it on pretty much anything. Because of the ink, has an adhesive that's melted to it, it will transfer to pretty much any substrate. So cotton shirts, tri-blend shirts, polyester, nylon, tote bags, cardboard, and they put it on just about anything. And it works phenomenal. There's no weeding involved. It's pretty much print, cut, press. Super easy. 
The downsides of DTF are not all two prints are going to be alike. You can get yourself an Epson based printer, which are the most common, converted, probably about a thousand bucks. The inks aren't crazy expensive. They're, they're going to seem that way when you buy a set of inks for maybe $250, but they're going to last you a good while. The maintenance on it is crucial, but here's the thing. You also don't have to invest in the printer. You can just have transfers print and ship to you, which you're still going to need the heat press that we talked about earlier, some t-shirt blanks, but also a good way to monitor your quality control. So why should you do this? Because quality control is important. Now with DTF, you could order them. You don't have to pre-press them. If you have a bunch of designs that you want to just have on deck, order a couple gang sheets, have them sitting there. When someone buys a shirt, press it, ship it. Not that bad. So to get started with DTF, you can actually print your own. You're going to need a printer. You're going to need transfers. You're going to need ink. You're going to need powder. You're going to need a heat press. That's pretty much it. Well, some software, some RIP software. Um, and RIP software can be anywhere from free to about $1,000. So let's put the DTF starter kit probably around three grand. Three grand you can get going with like a desktop version. If you wanna get into more of a commercial version of it, you're gonna be ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 for these bigger commercial printers, but we're not going that. We're talking about you at home just getting started, printing some t-shirts, printing something cool. Now, the next way you can go is direct to garment. I have a direct to garment printer. That is what I use to print all of my shirts. I also have HTV here, but my direct to garment printer is my go-to and there are a lot of them out there to choose from anywhere from say four grand up to about twenty five thousand dollars now i did buy a free jet it was very expensive i don't use it it's currently broken and it costs a lot of money to fix it and i'm just over fixing that machine right now so what i am using is an air ren it's a chinese model epson based printer and i have had my fair share of issues with that printer over since the time i've owned it but that being said, you get phenomenal prints, like what I'm wearing now, on direct-to-garment printers. Here's the added bonus to it. If you have a direct-to-garment printer, you can also print DTF transfers on it. So it's kind of a twofer. And I actually use the DTF almost as much as I use the DTG. So keep that in mind. It is more expensive, but it's gonna give you a lot more ease of printing. You can pretty much print any graphic file, PNGs, JPEGs, PSDs, um, all kinds of things and, and knock out. You have all these features with it. So Director Garmin is at the end of the day, probably the most uh, versatile form, but it's also the most expensive way to get in there. When you're, when you're going through print on demand, you're most likely getting someone who has a Director Garmin machine and the difference in quality versus speed is apparent. So when I look at reviews from Printful, I often see that, you know, maybe the image quality isn't that great or the print's not that vibrant. It's probably because Printful is wanting the vendor to provide the shirt at the cheapest possible price so that they can give it to you for a cheap price so that you can sell it for not too much and make a couple dollars. Now, if you're doing print on demand, your, bar, your profit margin's probably around 15 to 20% end of the day if you're doing a, at a decent markup, let's say 15 to 20%. So on a $20 shirt, you're making around, you know, four bucks, three to four dollars a shirt. Not that great. Now, if you're printing your own shirts, you're gonna and you're selling them for $20, you're probably making around $13 a shirt. It's a huge difference. So if you wanted to get started, my recommendation, HTV, if your designs are simple, you can get started with that, and your profit that you're going to get off each item is going to pay off that equipment relatively quickly. Let's be honest, it's not gonna take that long. You can make 500, 600 bucks in profit off of 20, 30 shirts, right? If you wanna go up the next step, a little bit less investment would be get you a heat press, get you some t-shirt blanks, and order you some DTF transfers. I print and ship them, a lot of people do online. You're probably gonna to wanna to get a couple from different vendors just to see um, which one prints the better version for you not all are created equal. So if you order one from me and one from somebody else, odds are you're gonna get two different looking transfers color-wise. That just has to do with the print profiles, the printers, the inks, all of that. They shouldn't be drastically different, but they will be different. Keep that in mind. But you can get started, let's say doing DTF, order you some gang sheets for a hundred bucks, order you, uh, get you a heat press. We said from the beginning, you're gonna need a heat press no matter what. And then from there, you just need some t-shirt blanks. Now I'm gonna cover t-shirt blanks in another video. 
but that should break down the most common ways to get started at home with your apparel brand. Um, the only other thing you're really going to need is some packing, shipping supplies, order that stuff on Amazon, get you some t-shirt bags. You know, you need a printer at home. It's the desktop printer, print some labels. That's what I do. Tape them up. Nothing too crazy, but I, leave me some comments with some questions. Maybe I can help answer them as to how else, what else you might need. You don't need a lot of space. I run my at home shop out of here about a 10 by 12 room. And then I have some, my heat press and stuff in the garage. It doesn't take up that much space to do. It's hobby size stuff. You can generate good at home income with more control of your inventory. The key to all of this is that you are not stocking printed inventory. The key to this is that you have blanks on the shelf and you have materials on the shelf. And when you get an order, you can then create that order and ship it off. That way you're not sitting on a whole bunch of pre-printed items that you may or may not sell because of size, color, uh, quantity, whatever, you know, time of year. Keep that in mind. Super important. So like and subscribe to the channel. Check out some more videos on the t-shirts. I'm going to be making more about how you can do this yourself. Also, the pros and cons to DTF, direct to garment, heat transfer vinyl, sublimation, <coughs> selling on Etsy, selling on Amazon, selling on Shopify, basically the entire thing. So follow the playlist so that you can learn more about the at-home t-shirt business in 2022.